Good evening, Flight Light and Lighthouse members. Welcome to our very first Good Friday online service at 10 p.m. So thank you for spending your time at this very hour to reflect some of the Bible words regarding the death and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So let's begin our online Good Friday service with the word of prayer. You can go to the prayer slide, Josh. Let us pray. Jesus, today we pause to remember your sacrificial love that shone light into the darkness, that bore life from such emptiness, and that revealed hope out of devastation, that spoke truth through incrimination, that released freedom in spite of imprisonment, and brought us forgiveness instead of punishment. Thank you that we can now walk in the light of your life, hope, truth, freedom, and forgiveness, this day and every day. Amen. Let's take a moment to hear the songs. Oh, the wonderful 
For the first Bible reading, Alan will lead us into will lead us into the uh, reflective reading. Alan, time is yours. Okay, first scripture is from Mark chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one to forty-one. I will read from the NIV version. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from. In from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they spied him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, "The King of the Jews." They crucified him. Uh, to, they crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by heard insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, "So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build in its three days, come down from the cross and save yourself." In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he gave himself. Let this Messiah. This King of Israel, come down, uh, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped the insult on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in the loud voice, "Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani," which means, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" When some of those standing near heard this, they said, "Listen, he's calling Elijah." Someone ran, filled a sponge with vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down," he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, "Surely this man was the son of God." Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women have followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Thank you, Alan. Friends, best on the readings、um, for today that Alan just read for us. Here is the reflective questions for us to ponder. He died for your sins and my sins. What have we done to be at least less sinful? Let's take a moment to reflect on these questions.
Our second Bible reading will be read by Daniel. Daniel, it's uh, time is yours. All right. Uh, the second scripture is from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 7. I'll also be reading from the NIV version. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Thank you, Daniel. Friends, based on the readings today that Daniel just read, let us reflect on the second question. On the last part of the reading, it says that Jesus didn't open his mouth, but simply accepted it willingly, the suffering. So would you do the same for him? Would you do the same for him? Let's reflect on this question. Our third Bible reading will be read by Jos. Okay, let's read uh, John chapter 11, verse 48 to 53, and I will read from the NRSV. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You, uh, who was, uh, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Amen. Amen. Friends, on the first 52, it says that, 
and not for the nation only that Jesus died, but most importantly, Jesus died together into one, the dispersed children of God. So the price to gather the, the dispersed children of God is through his death. How many times do we remember his death in our gatherings? Let's take a moment to reflect on these questions. Our last Bible reading is taken from Romans 5, 12 to 15, and then 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 12. I am going to read it from New Revised Standard Version. After all the readings, Paul says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body of in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Friends, based on this last reading, let's ponder on these last questions. Are you willing in your short and momentary life to carry the death of Christ in your body so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in your body. Let's ponder this question.
This is the end of our Good Friday online service. Let us close in prayer. My most glorious and suffering Lord, it is your hour. It is the hour by which you conquered sin and death. It is the very hour for which you came into this world, taking on flesh so as to offer your precious life for the salvation of the world. May I be with you, dear Lord, in these moments of suffering and death. May I, like your mother, John, and Mary Magdalene, stand at the foot of the cross, gazing upon the perfect gift of love. My suffering Lord, may I see in your cross the most perfect act ever known in this world. May I see love in its most pure form. May my eyes and soul look beyond the blood and pain and see your divine heart pouring forth mercy upon me as well as upon the whole world. Today, tonight, I kneel in silent adoration of you, my God. I sit quietly beholding the great mystery of our faith in you, Jesus. I behold you, God, beaten, bruised, mocked, tortured, and killed. But in this act, I see all grace and mercy flowing from your wounded heart. Bath the world in your mercy, dear Lord, and cover us with your grace and draw us to new life through your death. I love you, Jesus. I love you with all my heart. In you, I trust. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Friends, this is the end of our um, service. May God bless you and increase your love and devotion for him even more. Have a good night.